Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the HAS-37 Vigan again. In this video, I wanted to talk about QFE. Now, QFE is something that is relevant to all modules, as are all the different altimeter settings. However, due to the nature of DCS, most of the pilots in the SCS don't know about it, especially as it has not been as important as it is in the Vigan now. The reason for that is the CK37 computer does not store any altitude information for the terrain. So any waypoint you enter will be at the ground level and uh, that is not that uh, problematic for navigation. However, it will be a problem regarding weapon deployment, especially weapons that rely on having accurate altitude data for being able to hit the target accurately. So first things first, let's talk about QFE itself. If you're not that new to the uh, flight simulators, you probably heard of QNH and QFE already. Basically, QNH is the altimeter setting you have to enter into the altimeter to have it show the altitude above sea level. You can calculate the QNH, which it's quite uh, not that difficult, and any airport or any normal navigation you do will usually ri re rely on QNH. And uh, for example, if the airport is at 600 meters and you enter the correct QNH for that day and that air pressure, the altimeter will also show 600 meters. QFE, on the other hand, does uh, show the altitude above terrain at a certain point, at that point where the QFE has been measured. So, for example, if you are at an airfield and if you enter the QFE for that airfield, the altimeter will show zero. On the other hand, if you don't know the QFE for an airfield, you can just dial down the altimeter to zero and then you have the QFE for that airfield. Now, any point in the terrain that is at a different altitude will have its own QFE. And uh, you kind of can compare the QFE setting on the altimeter to a radar altimeter. However, the QFE setting doesn't change automatically and it's only valid for one point or if the area is very flat for a small area where the QFE will be correct. And for the Wigan in this example, the QFE has to be set for the target to have accurate weapon deployment for some of the weapons. Now, the difficulty in DCS is getting a QFE, because currently there are no in-game tools available, there is no F10 map, cheat or something you can use. The only way you can currently get QFE by default in the Wigan is if you set up the flight plan in the mission editor, and if you open the kneeboard, it will show for each waypoint the corresponding QFE. So if you have a pre-planned mission that has been laid out in the mission editor, and all the waypoints have been set there, and the target is at one of those waypoints, you will were golden. You could just read out the QFE from there and use that to engage the target. However, on a multiplayer server, or whenever you're engaging a target that is not at such a predefined waypoint, you will not know the QFE. And um, there are a couple of things you can do to actually find the QFE for a given waypoint. Yeah, some of them just rely on the radar altimeter and some of, the, uh, some of them rely on mathematics. Not Nothing too difficult and we will look at that stuff in a second. But first of all, let's look at which weapons actually need uh, the accurate QFE setting to be working correctly. I have made a small list and I have split it up into four categories. Um, weapons that don't rely on any QFE setting at all, weapons that need a somewhat accurate QFE setting or a low accuracy QFE setting mainly for weapon release parameters to be met then weapons that require a medium QFE, uh, medium accuracy QFE setting and weapons that rely or need a high accuracy in the QFE setting. Now weapons like the RB24 and RB74 air-to-air -air missiles that are IR guided they don't need any QFE setting because they don't care about the target altitude directly. Neither do the RB05A nor the RB75 need a QFE setting. They can be launched from any altitude and both of them are either manually or optically guided 
and therefore QFE doesn't really matter because they don't. They can, if you have line of sight to the target, you can fire those weapons from any altitude basically. Now the RB04E, the RB15F and the BK90, they need a somewhat accurate or a low accuracy QFE setting. And while all those weapons have internal radar altimeters that will help the weapon to navigate at the correct altitude towards the target, QFE or somewhat correct QFE settings required for launch permission. If you are not within the right launch altitude, determined by the radar alt uh, by the sorry by the normal altimeter down here, the weapons will not release. So, for example, if you engage a target at a higher altitude and have the wrong QFE set, you will not be able to release those weapons. So, you want to make sure that uh, the QFE for those weapons is set somewhat accurately. Usually, as for example, for the RB04E and the RB15F, where the target is on sea level, you can also set the Q&H, because Q&H and QFE at sea level is the same thing, because both will measure the altitude to sea level. A medium accuracy uh, of the QFE setting is required for the ARAC rockets or the ACAN gun pod. Both of those weapons rely on the radar ranging, and um, therefore don't actually need a QFE setting to be accurate to hit the target. However, the guidance via the HUD and uh, the weapon deployment uh, symbology will only show up at the correct altitude determined by the QFE setting or the altimeter setting down here. So you want to be somewhat accurate on the QFE setting down here, else you will not get the symbology before you're too, uh, too close or too far away. So uh, you want to have somewhat accurate QV setting for those. And bombs are kind of similar. Some of the bombing modes also re rely on the radar, while other bombing modes rely on the QV setting alone. So uh, to make it easy, I just uh, assume that for any bomb deployment, you want to have the most accurate QV setting possible, else your bombs will miss even or sometimes by margins of a couple hundred meters if the QFE is set completely wrong and the target is at a high altitude, for example. And yeah, if you keep that list in mind, uh, obviously the easiest way is to always have the highest accuracy QFE setting available to you set, and then you won't worry about those. However, you can, if you, for example, engage a couple of ships, it's not that important, as this list here determines. So yeah, this concludes the basic overview. Let's go into um, the mission actually I've created and see how you can find a QFE or a QFE for a target area because often you will uh, be stuck in a situation where you don't have a QFE by either pre-planned waypoints or the mission briefing or anything like that and you will be relying on the aircraft's navigation tools and internal systems to find a QFE which is uh, possible so let's get right into that so for this scenario I have set up a target at our usual target airfield between Batumi and Kabuleti. It is a single truck currently marked with red smoke. You can see it there in the distance. Now by default, the Wigan will always spawn with the standby altitude indicator, altitude indicator tuned to the QNH and the primary altitude indicator tuned to the local QFE. In this case, we have taken off from Batumi, so we can assume that the current QFE is not correct because we have flown a couple of kilometers and uh, we want to find the right QFE ourselves. And uh, if you look out the window, you can see the terrain is very flat and even nearby the target, the terrain is at the same altitude as the target area. So this means we can use the radar altimeter to figure out the QFE at the target location. And this is quite easy. Uh, the Wigan has a couple of things to do that, you can do it a couple of different ways, but the best way has been pointed out in Chuck's HAS37 guide that I will link down in the description. It's definitely worth a read, it's a quick start guide to the Wigan and it's very well written. And uh, if I were you, I would gef definitely go check that out. And this has also been mentioned by one of the developers as the proper way to do it, or the way to do it with the radar altimeter. And to do it, First, we want to switch the, uh, the HUD's altitude source to the altimeter, and not to the radar altimeter, but to the barometric altimeter. And then this will change the symbology up here.
here a bit. Now up here the 520 is the readout from the main altimeter. If we adjust the QFE setting it will change as you can see. And down here we have the altitude bars. And the small bars down here are the 100 meters above ground bars. And in the if we have selected the barometric altimeter as an input source, these bars will show two things at once. The horizontal bars will be the radio altimeters input and the vertical bars will be the barometric altimeters input. And now we can see currently the bars intersect. And uh, if we move the, uh, the QFE or the pressure setting on the main altimeter, you can see we can get those 100 meters bars to move. I hope you can see that. Let me zoom in a bit further. Um, let me zoom in this way. You can see those 100 meter bars, they move up and down. In fact, all the bars do, but for uh, this scenario, the 100 meter bars are important. And um, to, uh, to find the proper QFE for this area, the only thing we have to do is to align the bottom of the 100 meter bars, the vertical bars, to the horizontal bars. And let me do that right now. This should be, uh, let me get right there. And this should be quite close. You can see the vertical bar and the horizontal bar just barely touch at the bottom. And this means that the radio altimeter value and the barometric altimeter value are very similar to each other. And if we select uh, the radio altimeter's input source again, we can see currently the barometric altimeter shows about 460 meters and the radio altimeter shows 460 meters as well. And um, we can just quickly toggle back as a reference, still the same. And um, now we have set up the barometric altimeter and the QFE setting or the pressure setting for the current position radio altimeter altitude. As you remember, QFE is the same as the radio altimeter altitude and um, on flat terrain this works reasonably well to find the altitude of a target area. I mean, it's not perfect. A uh, more accurate method would be preferable, but if you have nothing else, we can use this, and if the terrain is flat enough, we can go ahead and use the radio altimeter as shown. And I mean, in this case, I had to pause the aircraft uh, with active pause because explaining this takes some time however you have to train this a bit and then you're quite quick and you can do it while flying past the target area or while approaching the target area uh, if you if the terrain is very flat like behind us if we were approaching from there we could actually even set the QFE setting on the approach run uh, which would not be ideal but uh, it would be if it, the target area is very hostile towards us it would be uh, a good method to not have to pass the target area more than once. However, if the defenses are very high and if you have very steep terrain all around the target area, this method is not very usable or you, you would have to overfly the target a couple of times to set up the radar altimeter and uh, the QFE setting like we did right now. So there is a different method we can use. So let me switch into another aircraft and let's do that right now. For the second scenario, we have a target that is high up in the mountains with a lot of different terrain around it. And if we zoom in a bit, you can see the smoke there in the distance that is marking our target. And here, using the radio altimeter would be less than ideal. The terrain is climbing and rising uh, and descending rapidly and uh, it's not very even. And therefore, we want to use a different method of acquiring the QFE for the target area. And uh, luckily, we can use some mathematics to help us out here. And doing that is not that difficult. And uh, we will start doing so right now. So let's go ahead and let's switch to the F10 map. Because for this mission to work, we need to know the target's altitude. And uh, this is the only uh, backdrop to it, but uh, you can always use the F10 map to find an altitude of an area. And if you have the target here, and if I put my mouse cursor over it, in the top left, you will see the target's altitude. In this case, 1918 meters above sea level. And uh, after we know the altitude of the target, the only remaining thing we need to know is the QNH. And by default, um, in a static weather scenario, the QNH will not change too much. If you have a strong dynamic weather set, 
the QNH can change over a longer distance. However, if the target area is somewhat close to your starting airfield, you just can use the QNH that the starting uh, ATC gave you uh, for these calculations. If you do an air start, you can use the standby altitude indicator because it will always display QNH. And in this case, the QNH is 1012 hectopascals. And now we can use the mathematics or some mathematics to calculate the QFE. And for this, we need to know how much the pressure changes for every meter we climbed. And the static value for that is one hectopascal per 9.3 meters. So every 9.3 meters we climb, the air pressure will change by one hectopascal. And uh, you can see that, or barely see that, if you move the, radar, uh, the barometric pressure input here on the altimeter, you can see that the needle moves at about uh, 10 meters, or moves for about 10 meters altitude. And uh, using those two, uh, those two valuables and the 9.3 meters per one hectopascal, um, we can calculate the di pr pressure difference between ground level and the target's altitude. And doing so is quite easy. We just want to divide the pressure, uh, sorry, we, we just want to divide the altitude of the target by our 9.3 meters. And therefore, we divide 1980 meters by 9.3. And the result will be 206 hectopascals. And 206 hectopascals is our pressure difference. If we subtract those 206 hectopascals from the current QNH, which is 1012 hectopascals, we will get a QFE of 806 hectopascals. Now we can use the main altimeter, uh, just input 806 hectopascals. And uh, doing so will or should give us the correct QFE and correct altitude for the target. And currently we are 1,100 meters above the target. And if we unpause the mission now, let's go check and see if those inputs have been correct. I mean, I could be telling lies, so let's check it and make sure that this works. Now here on the hut, you can see the two vertical bars, which is the altimeter input. Remember, we are in air pressure mode for the hut. And the, the, sorry, the horizontal bars are the altimeter input and we want to descend a bit further until the vertical 100 meter bars show up. Sometimes they don't drop and you just have to reset the reference pressure a bit lower uh, by pulling the reference button on the joystick. The same one you use on takeoff for aligning the heading with the runway heading. Okay, now we have set it and now we have the altitude bar showing. And if we head towards the target, it's still straight ahead of us. Uh, it's just hard to see. We should hopefully see the horizontal bars and the vertical bars touching. And uh, currently there is a small gap, but that small gap is just a difference of about one or two hectopascals. If we were to move our pressure input a bit, those bars would immediately touch. And uh, as we get closer, it's getting even better, so we're even more accurate. And let me turn a bit so we can actually see the bars still. And there we go. You can see the target is just at the bottom now. Unfortunately, the smoke stopped. But uh, the horizontal and vertical bars are touching. And this means that the, ca uh, the QFE we have calculated is uh, quite correct. I mean, obviously, it's easier to do this before you take off than in flight. But if you, for example, are on an open server, like Open Conflict or Blue Flag, and you don't have a pre-planned mission, you can do those uh, calculations together with inputting the data into the CK37 and just write down the QNH for the target and then once you're airborne and getting closer to the target you can uh, input the QFE, sorry I meant to say QFE before, you can input the QFE into your main altimeter and this should allow you to drop bombs and other weapons that rely on the QFE quite accurately. And yeah, this concludes this video. I hope I could clear some things up about the QFE. I know it's a bit difficult, but uh, this at least should give you a basic understanding. I also would recommend checking out the guide made by Chuck. I'll have a link for that down in the description. It explains this stuff even better than I can do, or uh, quite a lot better than I can do actually. So it's definitely worth a read. And yeah, thank you very much 
for watching. I hope you fly safe and have fun.